Hello everybody and welcome back to Animal 3000. Today we are going to be talking about something that many people consider a creepy pet along with myself, but some people find very interesting. Introducing the one, the only, Tarantula. The Tarantula or Maglia morphe are are referred to as tarantulas, you know, because the tarantulas. There are over 900 different species of tarantulas. So, yeah, that's a lot. Some species have become popular in the pet trade, obviously, because otherwise they wouldn't be pets. So, here are some basic facts. Their kingdom, Animalia. Philium, Arthropodia. Subphilium, Chelesteria, order Arani, In infraorder Magliomorphae, family Therosphodiae, which is like all spiders. So some of the subfamilies in tarantulas are Pocilotherini, Cyniocomini, Speliocomini, and Thergiospomene. So. Where do they live? Tarantulas of ver various species occur throughout the United States, Mexico, Central America, and throughout South America. Other species occur variously throughout Africa, very much of Asia, and a little bit of Australia. Well, actually, most of Australia. In Europe, some species occur in Spain, Portugal, Turkey, South Italy, and Cyprus. So, the habitats. Some genera of tarantulas hunt prey primarily in trees. Others hunt near the, on or near the ground. All tarantulas can produce silk, while arboreal species typically reside in, silk, in a silken tube net. Terrestrial species line their burrows with silk to stabilize the burrow wall and facilitate climbing upset, up and down. Tarantulas mainly eat large insects and other arthropods such as centipedes, millipedes, other spider, and other spiders, using ambush as their primary method of prey capture. Armed with, the, armed with their massive, powerful, clary-tipped, long, chitinous veins, tarantulas are well adapted to killing other large arthropods. The biggest tarantulas sometimes kill and some consume small vertebrates, vertebrate, sorry, I can't talk today, such as lizards, mice, bats, birds, and even sm some small snakes. I'm sorry, this phone is very shaky right now. Someone has to do her homework. Hi. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get an education over here. Uh, and I'm fine with it because she let me use her phone anyway. Not very willingly, but she did. Sylvie, the sponsor of this video. No, I'm not. Go away. Give a thumbs up or I won't. Try me if I'm speed tipping. Yeah, she's not going to give us thumbs up, so I will for her. Sponsored. All right, moving on to the predators. Regardless of their fearsome reputation, tarantulas themselves are, no, are an object of predation. Most, mo, the most specialized of these predators are large members of the wasp family, Pompilidae, such as the wasp Hemspicius altusa. These wasps are called tarantula hawks. Can you guess why? They're huge, and they eat tarantulas. Alright, so the largest tarantula hawks, such as those in the genus Pepsis, tr track, attack, and kill large tarantulas. They often use offlication to find the layer of a tarantula. The wasp must deliver a sting to the underside of the spider's cephalochlor... Ceph yeah, cephalochloria, exploiting the thin membrane between the base leg segments. 
This paralyzes the spider and wasp. The wasp then drag it, drags its it back to its burrow before depositing an egg on the prey's abdomen. The wasp then seals the spider in its burrow and flies off to search for more hosts. The wasp larva hatches and feeds on the spider's intestinal parts, and as it approaches pup- pupitation, it consumes the remainder. Other arthropods, such as giant centipedes, are also known to prey on tarantulas. So, no, tarantulas aren't indefeatable. They're actually very defeatable. Also, humans eat them sometimes. Look it up. It, it, it looks absolutely disgusting. Moving on to the life cycle of the Silvera. No, just kidding. It's tarantulas. If you mention me in this video one more time, I'm not going to be happy with you. You're already not happy with me. Yes, also it's helpful if you set it down and use the pop socket. But then it leans like this. Let us know what you think. Pop. Oh! Yay! It's at the right height. Okay then. Moving on. Life cycle of the Torah. Tula. So, like other spiders, tarantulas have to shed their exoskeleton periodically to grow, a process known as molting in the human English language. I know I'm weird. I don't care. Your foot. I'm moving my foot. Okay. A young tarantula may do this several times a year as part of the ma- as part of maturing. While full-grown specimens not only molt once a year or less, or sooner to replace lost limbs or irritating hairs. Clearly, molting will soon occur when the exoskeleton takes on a darker shade. If a tarantula previously used its urstitating hairs, the bald patch turns from a peach color to deep blue. The tarantula also stops feeding and becomes more lethargic during this time. So, if your tarantula is lethargic, and that's why you're watching this, don't worry. If there's any blue spots on your tarantula, don't worry. If your if your tarantula is lethargic without blue spots, contact your tarantula's veterinarian or any veterinarian, because I don't think you have a specified veterinarian for your bug. Anyway, tarantulas may live for years. Most species take two to five years to reach adulthood, but some species may take up to 10 years to reach full maturity. That's right, they live for 10, well, more than 10 years. So if you're looking for a short-term pet, may I recommend praying mantises? They only live about five years, at most. Most of the time, less. Anyway, so, let's see. Upon reaching adulthood, males typically have a 1 to 1.5 year period left to live and immediately go in search of a female to which to mate. Male tarantulas rarely molt again once they reach adulthood, but they may attempt to do so, usually becoming stuck during a molt due to their sexual organs and dying in the process. So if you have a male tarantula... It's an adult, and it's about to molt. It's going to die. I'm sorry. Or you could just get rid of the molt stuff. Or if any of it's sick, just cut it off, I guess. I don't know. Contact your tarantula vet if there is a such thing. Because it's a bug. Very, very expensive bug. Anyway. Females continue to molt after reaching maturity. Female specimens have been known to reach 30 to 40 years of age, which is why they are not a short-term pet, and have survived on water alone for up to two years. Gamolza rosea spiders are known for only eating once or twice a week and living up to 20 years in captivity. So if you want to learn a long-term bug as a pet, 
May I recommend the Gamolza Rosia Tarantula? And now, last thing I'm going to talk about is previous tarantulas. Dun dun dun! Watch the paper. Sorry. I, I, do you lay on any of my papers? Huh? Make sure you're not sitting on any of my papers. I'm not. I'm not sitting. You know what I mean. All right. So, although fossils of meliomorph spiders date back to the Triassic period, only two specimens have been found so far which can convincingly be assigned to the Theropocity. One of them is from the Dominican Republic amber, the other is from Mexican amber. Both of these ambers are quite young, being Miocene age about 16,000 years old. So, they're not very old. But, that is tarantulas in a nutshell. Bum, bum. Ba, da, 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 da. They're little bugs with all eight legs creeping around your house. If you own one, don't be scared, but I would cause I have arachnophobia. All right, that's all. Thanks for watching Animal 3000. Over and out. Bye.